The Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. Yeah. It's The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. Now let's peep into the world of Summerfield and see what goes on there. It's Thursday night, not Saturday, but a familiar commotion upstairs over Floyd Munson's barber shop leads us to conclude that the Jolly Boys Club is assembled there. Let's get started, huh? Have order, please, gentlemen. Nobody wants order, Judge. We're trying to organize a poker game. We have a request from a member, Gildy, for a brief business session. What member? What business? Yeah, we never do any business. Floyd Munson has made the request, Chief, and I feel we should honor it. Mr. Munson, you something to bring to the attention of the club? I'll say. Address the chair, and you may have the floor. Address the chair, and you may have. Who made him chairman, anyway? Please, Gildy. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, fellow members... I'll say what I got to say, and you can take it from there. And I might say before I start, I'm sorry to have to bring this up at this time. Uh, The club rooms here belong to me. Of course, the bank's got a piece of it, but the building's in my name. (laughs) And the wife's. All right, all right, what of it? Order, order. Continue, Flora. Well, I've been letting the club use the place. Glad to have you, but something's come up. Day before yesterday, I had a chance to rent it. Rent it? Who'd want to rent this dump? Well, it was a young fellow and a girl. Just married. What do they care where they live? <laughs> Anyhow, they offered me 20 bucks a month. That's a lot of money for this place, Floyd. Inflation, Chief. That's what it is. Well, the OPA said it was okay. I figure I can't afford to turn it down. You gotta turn it down. This is the Jolly Boys headquarters. You can't rent it to any Tom, Dick, and Harry that wants to go on a honeymoon. Well, I was talking it over with the wife last night, and I told her that. I said, Lovey, the fellas won't like it. The club's been a second home to them. What did she say, Floyd? Well, it's no use going into that. <laughs> to her, 20 bucks is 20 bucks, at least. But now if the club was to pay me rent... Why, naturally, I'd be glad to have you fellas stay on. Oh, so that's it. You call yourself a jolly boy, Floyd? You're a hold-up man, that's what you are. If I may step from the chair for a moment, Gildersleeve, you're being ridiculous. Get back in the chair. (laughs) Let's just look at this thing sensibly. We're asking Floyd to give up $20 a month so we can have a club room. Is that the way for jolly boys to treat each other? Why, no, that's terrible. That's all there is to it. We've got to reimburse Floyd for the use of the club rooms. I now resume the chair. Oh, goat. <laughs> Do I hear a motion that we reimburse Floyd for the use of the club room? Won't someone make the motion? I'd be willing to make it. That's illegal <laughs> and unconstitutional. Listen, fellas, there's only five members in this club. Do you realize we'd each have to pay $4 a month dues? Many clubs charge even more. Not for a drafty room with a kitchen table and a busted piano. Oh, it ain't a bad piano. The Elks don't have no piano at all. The Elks have two pool tables. Sure, when they pay dues, they get something for it. Well, if we had more members, the dues wouldn't have to be so high. Say, you might have something there, Judge. Don't be childish, Floyd. When you ask people to join a club, they expect to get something for their money. Like a pool table. Couldn't you get hold of a pool table someplace, Floyd? Pool tables cost a lot of money. I know who's got a pool table. Maybe he'd be willing to join the club and let us have it. Then we could put on a real membership drive. Well, who's got it? Your friend and neighbor, Gildy, Rumson Bullard. Has Bullard got a pool table? No fooling? It sure would be nice to have a pool table right in your house. That's my idea of living. Yeah, well, I don't know. I don't know whether Bullard's got one or not. Have you seen it, Horace? No, oh, I assumed you had. Haven't you ever been in your rich neighbor's house, Gildy? On numerous occasions, but I never saw any pool tables. Well, a pool table's pretty tough to hide. Ain't like a day bed, you know. No. He might have a billiard room in the basement. A playroom, probably. Lots of people have playrooms down in the basement right there with the furnace, I hear. Well, why don't we look into it? You drop over there tomorrow, Gildy, and see if he wants to join. Then, ask him to lend us the pool table. Why me? It's for the Jolly Boys, Commissioner. Sounds like the only way we can hold the Jolly Boys together. Well, if you put it that way, but I'm not very anxious to call on Rumson Bullard. 
He's never been particularly friendly. That's probably because you never got to know him. Down underneath, he's probably a swell fellow. It's not easy to get to know rich people, Chief. They're always afraid you're going to get something out of them. Like a pool table. <laughs> well, I'll see what I can do. Now, for heaven's sake, let's get our minds off money and play a little poker. Why don't you go see him tomorrow night, Gildy, and then come down here and report to us? All right, all right. Okay, everybody, Andy and Nickel, deuces and one-eyed jacks are wild, and no cheating till you're down to your last dollar. <laughs> <laughs> Howdy, Bullard. Remember me? Gildersleeve. Oh, yes, yes. Come in, won't you? Well, thank you. Can't stay. I have to get downtown, but I... Well, I thought I might just pay a neighborly call. I'm glad you did. My wife's gone to New York for a few days, so I'm all alone here. Uh, with Craig, that is. Oh, yes, Craig. Remarkably attractive little boy, Craig. Yes. <clears throat> He's going to bed, I'm glad to say. Why don't we just come into the library, Gildersleeve, as long as there's only two of us? Library? Fine. I've never seen it. Hmm. Uh, just down the hall here. Well, well. Books. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I've accumulated a few volumes. Sit down. Have a cigar? Yeah, thanks. But here, try one of mine. Three for a half. No, no, no. I insist. Uh, I have these made up for me in Havana, if you... Uh, like a mild cigar. Say. Yeah. Light. Why, George, that's a real cigar. Yep, yeah, makes nice smoke. <clears throat> Gold tip. Yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> well, uh... Care to look at some of my first editions? Or uh, perhaps you're more interested in fine printing, bindings, and that sort of thing. Are, uh, are you a bibliophile? Oh, you bet I am. I belong to the book of the month for several years. <laughs> well, I've got a... Uh, yes, I have a few nice items here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, here's something, yes. Milton's Paradise Lost, hand set in London by Alfred Royce. Printed on vellum with red and gold initials and bound in full Morocco. I've read it. Of course. But uh, to a lover of fine printing, now, uh, here, 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 just just look at this page. Oh, page 24. Beautiful, just as clear. Mm -hmm. they, they only printed 200 of these. They, uh, they sold originally for $700 a copy. Huh? Yes, yes, but I, I was lucky. I, I picked it up at an auction in London for 560 <laughs> <laughs> I, I robbed him, didn't I? Yes, yeah, like taking pennies from a kid's bank. <laughs> yeah, find a lot of books you got here, all right. Oh, I, I'd forgotten you'd never been in this room. Uh, care to see some of the rest of the house? Uh, well, I got to be getting on. Uh, by the way... Yes? Nothing. <laughs> well, you don't have to go just yet. Let me uh, let me show you around. Well, for a minute. <laughs> Here is my, uh, my gun room. Oh, yes. A uh, gun room? Mm. Another of my hobbies. Uh, the really old pieces I, I keep in the glass case here. Now, see that, uh, that big fellow there on the end? That's a Spanish blunderbuss from the 18th century. Hand-carved barrel. Will it shoot? Well, I, I hate to try it. Now, uh, the gun on the right is an old flintlock uh, musket. My pistols and rifles are over here. Say, uh, this is a regular arsenal. You're not expecting any... Uh... <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh... But I, I dare say I could give a pretty good account of myself if necessary. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, this, this is a Derringer, early 19th century. Devilish-looking little thing, isn't it? Yes. Uh, let's go back to the library. Now, uh, we'll go back to the library later. First, I want to show you the billiard room. You've got to see that. Don't tell me you've got a billiard table. Yes, yes, I say billiards is really a gentleman's game. Well, I can't seem to get the hang of it. Ever play any pool? 
No, no, I never cared for pool. Uh, do you like it? No, billiards is the game for me. Mm. Well, drop over any evening you care to play. Yeah, I might just do that. Uh, who do you play with generally? Oh, no one in particular. I, I haven't played a great deal of billiards since I lived in London. I uh, belong to a club in London where I got very fond of it. Oh, is that so? Uh, speaking of clubs, Mr. Bullard, I... Yes? Uh, nothing. <laughs> Yes, London's a great place for clubs. Uh, now, this was a place in German Street. Been standing right there in the same spot for over 200 years. Oh, pretty exclusive district around there? A mm, lot of fine clubs. In this club, they had oh, six or eight billiard tables, several card rooms. And many's the afternoon I've seen 5,000 pounds change hands in that card room. See, that's a fortune. Yes, yes, but uh, they're such gentlemen, you could hardly tell who'd won and who'd lost. Of course, one afternoon, a fellow shot himself afterward. Oh, a winner or a loser? Uh, a loser, yes. Oh. Brilliant young fellow he was, but uh, uh, wild as the devil. Youngest duke, uh, youngest son of a duke. Oh, a duke, yeah. Must have been a terrible shock to his father. Mm, frightful, frightful. The whole club was in mourning for a week. Ah, but club life is a fine thing, fine thing. Oh, you bet, you the bet. Spirit of good sportsmanship. Yes, sir. The feeling of loyalty and companionship between real gentlemen. Yes, yes. Ah, I miss club life. I don't suppose there are any men's clubs here in Summerfield, are there, Gildersleeve? Um, uh, huh? I say, are there any men's clubs here in uh, Summerfield? Uh, no, Mr. Bullard. There isn't a single one. Wait a minute, fellas. Wait a minute. I tried to ask him. I started several times to ask him. And then each time, something would come up that I couldn't. Well, of all the chicken-hearted fellas to send on a simple errand... Watch out what you, who you're calling chicken-hearted, you old goat. Why, what's trouble? Couldn't you get him around to the subject? Well, we got to the subject, all right. We talked about clubs for quite a while. What a cinch. Just say, speaking of clubs, Mr. Bullard, there's a little spot where I and a few of my friends hang out. Like to have you drop around sometime. It wouldn't have worked, Floyd. Well, I'm blessed if I see why. Why didn't you ask him, Commissioner? Because he's too good for this crummy joint, that's why. Well, I'll be darned. What makes him think he's such a much? That's what I want to know. Well, it's not his idea necessarily, Floyd. It's my opinion. You mean you think he's too good for us? If you put it that way, yes. Mr. Gilder. Sleeve. Oh, shut up and listen for a minute. Bullard has a house full of first editions, fine bindings. He has a dog that costs $300. He has a gun collection that must be worth thousands. He's a fellow that's used to gracious living. He can't hang around a club like this. It wouldn't be right. Is this Bullard too good to associate with a judge of the probate court? Judge Hook is a pretty high-class fella. Thank you, Floyd. Chief of police, one of the highest jobs in this town, and a useful man to know. Thank you. And what's the matter with Peavy? Runs as nice a drugstore as you'd want to see. And Floyd, he's got the only barber shop in the south end of town. Yeah. I know, fellas. You just don't understand. Bullard's been in high-class clubs in London with dukes and gentlemen. You ask me, Gildy, this fellow's nothing but a big snob. He is not. He's a mighty nice man to know. If you ask me, our water commissioner's getting to be a snob himself. Oh! <laughs> don't call me a snob, Floyd. Uh. You fellas wouldn't know how to treat a high-class fella like Bullard anyway. All right, go treat him then. Yeah, go ahead. We don't need you around here. Fellows, Mr. Gildersleeve's a jolly boy. I'm not sure he is, Chief. Not if he considers himself and his friends too good for us. Go on, go play pool with Bullard. All right, I will. Can you imagine that? Just for a pool table. It's not a pool table. It's a billiard table. Billiards is a gentleman's game. You the great Gildersleeve will be back in just a moment. Do you have a big Thanksgiving dinner at your house, Mr. Lang? Indeed we do. Turkey with all the trevings. And when Mrs. Lang planned her menu, I dropped a broad hint for some of those wonderful baking powder biscuits she serves on special occasions. Well, we prefer Parker House rolls or muffins. Well, it's a sure bet that hot breads of all kinds are popular on Thanksgiving menus. And, of course, everyone knows a delicious spread makes hot biscuits, rolls, and muffins taste extra good. That's why I always like to suggest that you serve them with parquet margarine. Why, that's our favorite spread, Mr. Lang. We always use parquet margarine. 
My husband likes parquet better than any spread we've ever tried. And I can well understand that, because parquet margarine's fresh, dairy-like flavor is still unmatched. So this week, when you're shopping for those good foods to serve during the Thanksgiving season, be sure to buy parquet margarine, the spread that tastes so good. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y, delicious, economical parquet margarine, made by the Kraft Foods Company. I'm sure you'll like it, because millions prefer parquet margarine to any other brand. Now let's get back to our story. It's Saturday night, and Saturday night is the Jolly Boys' night to howl. But a voice is missing. For the first time in many weeks, Gildersleeve is not to be found with his old associates. Gildersleeve this evening has hurried through dinner, stuffed a pocket with expensive cigars, and set out to take advantage of Bullard's invitation to drop in any time. Scarcely 24 hours have passed, and here he is, dropping in. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Craig. Is your father in? Where's Leroy? Leroy? <laughs> Well, he's at home, I guess. Uh, tell your father, will you, Craig, that Mr. Gildersleeve is here. Craig, get away from that door. Come upstairs. Uh, who's that? My nurse. She stinks. <laughs> Craig? <laughs> You'd better answer her, hadn't you? Why should I? Where's Leroy? I want him to come over. Well, Leroy can't just now, I'm afraid, Craig. Run up and tell your father he has a caller, will you? Craig, shut that door and come up to bed. There's a man here. Yeah, <laughs> Tell her it's Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, it's Mr. Gildersleeve from across the street. Well, there's nobody home. Oh, well, Mr. Bullard will be back, maybe. I'll just amuse myself in the billiard room while... There's I... nobody home. Yes, <laughs> you said that. <laughs> he said I might use his billiard table anytime, so if you don't mind, perhaps... He didn't say anything to me. Guess he didn't. <laughs> Fine way to treat a man. Invite him to use your billiard table, then sick the nurse on him. Oh, well. Now what'll I do? Saturday night. Only 7.30. Can't just go home and go to bed. Besides, it's Saturday night. No, I won't go down there. But what can I do? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Surprise. Oh, it's you. <laughs> well, aren't you surprised to see me, Leela? No, I suppose you'd be around sooner or later. Oh, is that so? <laughs> well, get your things on, Leela. We're going places Saturday night. I'm sorry. I have a previous engagement, which I'm just about to make. But, Leela... It's time you learn, Throckmorton. I have better things to do than sit here and wait for you to turn up. And it's time you learn there's more to caught in a lady than just whistling at her. <laughs> Some Saturday night. Now what am I going to do? What is there to do? Nope, I will not go down there. <laughs> Suppose I could stroll down to the drugstore, see what's doing there. No, I'm always hanging around there. Won't go there either. Well, I guess all that leaves is home. What a town. Saturday night at home. Auntie, you back? I thought you were out. 
for the evening. Yes, well, I changed my mind, Marjorie. You going somewhere, my dear? Over to Francie's. She has some of the gang coming in. Oh, well, have a good time. Thanks. Oh, um... Yes? You wouldn't care to stay home and play a quiet game of dominoes or something with your old uncle, I suppose. Uncle, I'd love to. I'd just love to. But I promised Francie and the gang, and I wouldn't want to disappoint them. Ask me another time, will you? Yes, yes. Run along. Have a good time. Thanks. Oh, um... Yes? Where's your brother? What's he doing? Leroy? Oh, he's going to the movies, if he hasn't already gone. Oh, here he comes now. Yes. Well, Leroy, you're dressed up for once. Yeah. My boy, how would you like it if your old uncle went to the movies with you? Well, I wasn't going to the movies exactly. Bertie was going to take me to hear famous Jones and his orchestra at the Majestic. Hey, Bertie, it's ten after. I'm coming. (laughs) Now, wait a minute, my boy. I thought you and I might just stay home together tonight and have a good game of dominoes. Are you kidding? Then if we stayed home tonight, why, next Saturday I'd take you to that football game you've been wanting so much to go to. How would that be? Well, Leroy, you coming? Of course, it's up to you, my boy. You get your choice. The movies with Bertie this evening or the football game with me next Saturday. Makes no difference to me one way or the other. Well, if it makes no difference to you, Unc, I think I'll go with Bertie. All right, go on then. (laughs) Go on, all of you. Leave me alone here all by myself. I am nobody... I just pay the bills around here, that's all. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> hello, Peavy. Yeah, that's just about giving you up for this evening. I've just about given myself up. How do you mean? Peavy, have you ever tried spending an evening alone? Worst darn thing in the world. Well, I wouldn't say that. (laughs) Well, it's terrible. That's why I came down here, to have somebody to talk to. Well, as a matter of fact, I was planning to close up here a little early so that I could stop by the Jolly Boys Club on the way home. Oh, Well, in that case... How does it happen you're not over there this evening, Mr. Gildersleeve? You always seemed a pretty faithful... I uh, couldn't make it. Oh. Well, if you'd care to stop by there with me now... Well, I think I'd better not, thanks. Well, shoot yourself, but you said you wanted somebody to talk to. Well, truth of it is, Peavy, I've had a little falling out over there with some of the less desirable element. Talking about Floyd? Well, him and some others. Chief Gate? Him, too. Okay. Uh Uh-huh. That leaves you and me. (laughs) Well, these little differences of opinion are bound to occur, I'd say, even among jolly boys. It was more than a difference of opinion, Peavy. Floyd called me a big, fat snob. There's no difference of opinion about that. (laughs) (laughs) Well, is there? What did you call Floyd, Mr. Gildersleeve? I didn't call him a thing. Not a thing. You gave him no provocation? None whatever. He just walked in and said, Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve, you big fat snob, huh? (laughs) Well, I may have made some trifling reference to his social standing. That's what I say. Now, why not let bygones be bygones? I'm sure if you come over there with me now and everybody apologizes... That's one thing I'll never do. Apologize. All right, don't. Just come over there with me. Let him come over here. I'm closing up here. Well? You just come along and leave everything to me, Mr. Gildersleeve, and I'll see if I can't straighten it all out. Well, all right, Peavy. But remember, I won't apologize. Well, aren't you coming up, Mr. Gildersleeve? I'll wait down here. What for? You go up and see how the land lies, Peavy. That's a good fellow. I'll wait down here. Yeah. Yeah. Call me if it's all right. Well, if it ain't me. Welcome, stranger. Thank you, my friend. Oh, yeah. Well, I suppose they're hashing me over up there now. I don't know that I like this. What are they taking so darn long about? Can't keep me waiting down here like a lackey. Wonder what a lackey is. 
Got a good mind to walk out and leave him flat. After all, I didn't want to come over here in the first place. This has been about long enough by, George. Gosh, you don't think they'd blackball me? Commissioner, you down there, pal? (laughs) (laughs) I hear you calling me. Uh, Come ahead, the coast is clear. You called me when the moon had veiled her light. Before I went from you into the night, I came, do you remember? Hi, fellas. Evening, Throckmorton. Lloyd? Hi. Hi. Come in, come in, Commissioner. Join the happy throng. Uh, Thank you, Chief. (laughs) Now, uh, we've been talking it over here, Commissioner. The pros and the cons. Floyd has got something he wants to say to you. Go ahead, Floyd. Say it. Yes, Floyd. Say it. Well, Commissioner, I'm sorry if I got a little out of line here the other night. The fact is, I didn't say what PV says I said. I only told him what you told me. You said, Floyd, that I was a big, fat snob. I never said you were fat. (laughs) Everybody knows that. Floyd! I didn't come down here, gentlemen, to be re-insulted. Floyd, now apologize nice, like you said you would. Go ahead, Floyd. Uh, I'm sorry, Commissioner. I don't know what come over me. I could bite my tongue off. Well, ain't that good enough? I think that's very handsome, Floyd. Commissioner? Well, maybe it was my fault a little too, Floyd, now that I come to think of it. Ah, <laughs> you old swindler. You old horse thief. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the stuff. My golly, it does my heart good to hear you talk like that. What say we shake hands all around, eh? I'm game. Shake your lips. Shake, shake. There is a tavern in the town, in the town. And there my true love sets him down, sets him down and drinks his wine with laughter free. And never, never thinks of me. We'll hear from the great Gildersleeve again in just a few moments. During the Thanksgiving and holiday season, there's usually a little strain on the family food budget. So on your shopping trips now, I imagine most of you ladies have an eye out for the best values in food. And when it comes to spreads for bread, one of the best values I know of is delicious parquet margarine. Parquet is only about half the price of costly spreads, and it provides your family with such rich, wholesome nourishment. Parquet is one of the best energy foods you can serve, and it's fortified with important vitamin A. And as for flavor, Parquet is preferred by millions because it tastes so good on bread, toast, rolls, and waffles. So if you want to make a real saving on a quality food, buy this nourishing spread that tastes so good. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine. Made by Kraft. He said I'd be back, and he was right. Good night, everybody. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It is written by John Wheaton and Sam Moore. The music is by Jack Meekin. This is John Lang speaking for the Kraft Foods Company and inviting you to listen in again next week for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Ladies, here's how to be ready at the drop of a hat with sandwiches, snacks, and appetizers. Keep a package of delicious Pabstet cheese food in your refrigerator. Pabstet is ready in a jiffy, can be served a hundred different ways. It spreads, melts, slices, toasts to perfection. Any way you serve it, any time you serve it, your family and guests are sure to like Pabstet's mellow cheddar cheese flavor. Pabstet comes in two popular varieties, golden cheddar and pimento. So head up your shopping list with delicious Pabstet cheese food. This is the National Broadcasting Company.